Welcome to the Dawn of War Crucible tutorial. Today we will be going over the Necron Stronghold and how to defeat it. Before we move on to the Stronghold itself, I would like to highlight some tools that would be helpful. First of all, in your Soulstorm folder you will find these, this autoexec.lua file. It has a bunch of useful commands that can help you if you're struggling. To be able to access these commands, you need to have dev developer mode turned on in your mod manager, and then when you start up the game, you should be able to press the appropriate keys to activate them. The four commands that have set sim rate are commands which will slow or speed up the game. Eight is the standard game speed, four is halved, two is a quarter, and 100 is much, much faster in case you simply want to rush through something. There are also commands that disable the AI, although these only work in skirmish. Do not use these in strongholds. They will simply break the strongholds. And toggle FOW, which will reveal the fog of war and let you see what's going on around the map. On top of that, if you're playing on normal and still struggling, there is an easier difficulty in the Discord, which will triple your unit's health. Now onto the Stronghold itself. So, the Necron Stronghold main, ne, ne, the Necron Stronghold's main philosophy is that if you let them do their own thing, they will outscale you. So you need to be aggressive, you need to be active, you need to be out on the map hindering the Necrons as much as possible. This starts off the get-go, where attack waves will spawn from one of these four locations, either from the Summon Plasma Generator, over here, over here, or over here. These attack waves are much harder depending on the difficulty, where as you can see, on Brutal, they are quite large, but on Easy, it's simply some Scarabs, and on Normal, it's some Scarabs and Warriors without the Wraiths. Okay. One th another thing to note is, as you can see, when I'm playing as Eldar and I have way more starting units that you would get from other factions, this is intentional to compensate for the fact that Eldar do not have in nearly as many honor guard when going into this mission. They gain some free units in order to help them. So, initially in the first five to seven minutes of the game, your goal should be to capture all nine of these listening posts. You get three for free, that you can start capping straight off the bat without any issues. This one, you can take out the plasma generator and then you should be able to cap it. The catch is this listening post will fire upon you, so you need to cap it using either a stealth unit or have a tanky unit positioned here, like your hero, so that the listening post targets the tanky unit and not the unit capping. Once it's uncapped and they have no vision, you should be able to cap it and then put a listening post on it. It might get shot a bit, but these obelisks do not do much damage to vehicles or structures, so even if it does get shot, you'll just need to occasionally repair it and it should be fine. So, after these four, there is a fifth listening post over here. After you destroy this generator, the initial attack waves will start spawning over here, as I'll show you in a second here. Let me swap players in order to show you all of that. They will start spawning over here, then they will spawn over here, and then they will spawn over here. So the idea is you get rid of the initial wave, then you move over here, take out this, yeah, as you can see, wave spawned over here. They're not this player. There we go. Let me just delete them so that the Eldar AI doesn't die. So they will spawn over here, so you want to take out this place, and then take out this place and this place. Another way to do it, take out the initial wave and the generator, 
fortify this area so that the attack waves keep spawning from over here. Take out these areas first and then move over here. I do recommend taking out all four places as the attack waves will ramp up as the Necrons get their upgrades. So if you do not take them out, these initial waves that seemed quite weak at first will get stronger simply due to the fact that the Necrons get upgrades now. So as you can see by their glow, the Necrons have gotten their first research on their Necron Warriors, and this will continue to ramp up over time, where they will gain basically all of the researches that are available to them throughout the game. So now that we've established the initial five to seven minutes of the game, which should be spent for uh, getting and fortifying all of this, what to do next? You have a few options. This monolith can be cheesed with artillery uh, for multiple factions if you choose to do so. You can go and take out the top base, take out the bottom base, go for the crits, or try to take out the middle. So, this depends on what exactly you're trying to accomplish and what your strengths and weaknesses as a player are. If you struggle the most with dealing with infantry, I recommend taking out the top base as it will spawn a lot of infantry which will ramp up pretty quickly to pariahs and lich guard. If you struggle most with vehicles, I suggest taking out the bottom base as it will keep sending vehicles uh, destroyers, all of that at you, and it will ramp up to monoliths as well. And if you simply want to take your time and have a lot of time to be able to do this mission, I suggest taking out, uh, focusing on the crits. Find the right player to show you something. We are taking damage. There we go. Okay. One thing to note is that the sentry pylons do not have a lot of range early. As you can see, it can barely reach the upper uh, scale. This range will scale over time. Right now, it's relatively small. As the game researches, it will increase. So as you can see, the Necrons just got their first research, and you saw the range was over here before. Now it's over here. And this will increase again, and eventually they will get their particle whip or particle accelerators, which means they will be able to bombard this entire area. This is why I am saying that you can choose to go for either of the bases or the middle first. If you choose to go for either of the bases, chances are you will not be able to take out the middle forces and cra cap the crits before the pylons uh, are able to start bombarding your forces. You can still get around them. If you use transports, you can sneak them past areas like this, especially certain transports like Elder transports can fly, so they can just fly over these dangerous zones and then cap the crits from there. But other than that, if you send your forces out at like, well, depending on the difficulty, but on harder difficulties at like 15 minutes, at lower difficulties, maybe like 20 to 30 minutes, they will get bombarded by the pylons. So, if you want to go for the crits, you need to do so fairly early. Another thing to note is that these patrol waves, they will constantly reinforce but they will not instantly rebuild. Okay? So, if ooh, Eldar are dying, let me just get rid of all of these units so that the Eldar don't die. Uh, these waves will constantly re reinforce, but they won't instantly rebuild. So let's say if you were to kill all of this, it won't just instantly spawn all of them again. It will keep spawning new squads, but it will keep spawning new squads anyway. 
So taking these out early can be quite beneficial because instead of dealing with this massive, massive amount of flayed ones and necron warriors and wraiths, you have to deal with a smaller amount and then wave strickling in. So if you want to cap the crits, I recommend you do so early. Hell, maybe even you take out this space and this space and go straight for them rather than trying to get rid of this little outpost. Maybe getting rid of that outpost simply takes too long, but I leave that up to your personal judgment. As for the middle itself, it is a difficult one to take out, and I recommend being at least tier 3 to do so, as the pylons are tier 3, pariahs are tier 3, there's a lot of units in here which are quite strong, and you will have trouble with if you're a lower tier. So, tier 3 to take out this. So, another thing that you can do is you could simply take this, fortify this location, fortify this location, and then try to tech up as quickly as you can, take out the middle, cap the crits, and then go from there. On anything other than Brutal, you should have more than enough time for that. It takes about... If you have a good build order on 9 listening posts, it takes about 20 to 25 minutes to be able to get tier 3 and get a lot of... Or even tier 4 and get a lot of good units. You can get some of the relic units. You can get a lot of just terminators and whatever else. And then you should be able to take out the middle, cap the crits, and at that point, the only thing you need to worry about are the increasingly difficult waves from top and bottom base. So then you will need to, from the middle, push either into the top base or the bottom base and take it out. Okay, so uh, moving on to the monoliths itself. First of all, as you may note, a lot more turrets surrounding them. And these turrets do get the upgrades over time, so over time they will get longer and longer range. Okay, let's kill all of this again so that the Eldar doesn't die. Yep, this is on Brutal, so don't be too scared if you're looking at this and you're like, how the hell am I supposed to deal with all of this? This is Brutal, this is the hardest difficulty, so it's fine. There will be a lot less units over here. There will be a lot less units coming to attack you on lower difficulties. So, monoliths themselves. Lots of turrets surrounding them. Turrets will get upgrades over time. And if you get close to them, they will spawn defensive waves that will uh, defend the monoliths. These defensive waves will only spawn if you haven't taken out the summoning core. So you see in the objectives, destroy summoning core. Summoning core structure grants Necron's ability to summon forces to defend one of their monoliths from anywhere on the map. Destroy the summoning core to prevent Necron teleportation. So you destroy the summoning core. It only has one pylon guarding it and a few turrets. And when you try to destroy it, a defensive wave will spawn on it, like it will on one of the monoliths. And then the monoliths will now spawn the unit reinforcements, you simply have to contend with the turrets and the monolith itself. The bottom monolith can be easily cheesed from here with artillery and maybe from like over here somewhere with artillery. I'm not sure exactly if they have the range. And this monolith can easily be cheesed from here. So the strategy that I mentioned where you simply stay on these nine um, listening posts and tech up the idea is you take out this monolith with artillery. When you tech up, you should be able to kill this place. And if you're teching up, I really recommend taking out the bottom base because it will start sending monoliths at you. It will send... Uh, yeah, it will just start sending monoliths at you in giant waves. And good luck holding that. That's going to be a toughie. So I recommend... Taking out the bottom base, cheesing this one, and then what you can do is you can leave the top 2B and you can simply fortify the position so when the monoliths spawn over here, you kill them and that's it, the mission is over. Okay.
So uh, let's quickly go over what I said. As basically all factions, you want to cap these nine listening posts. If you're really overwhelmed and don't think you can do that, you can stay on four on lower difficulties, but it's not recommended as you will have less than half the resources that you should to continue the mission. Then you can choose to either go take out the top base, grant yourself access to five more listening posts, if you see. One, two, three, four, five. Five more listening posts, which will be a massive boost to your economy, and then either attack from here or simply go back and continue your attack from here. Take out the bottom base, which will grant you access to three listening posts, access to this area, and a fourth listening post, and easy cheese on this monolith. Or you can choose to go for the crits and then eventually the middle, which will give you access to the timer of the mission, at which point the only thing that you have to contend with is the waves coming from here and over here. And obviously it will give you easier access to the crit, which, uh, which uh, to the relic, which again, note, if you're able to get the relic, you don't just gain the relic, you also gain two extra listening posts. So heavily, this mission heavily encourages aggression and actively going out on the map, as every aggressive move that you make, every piece of ground that you gain, it will benefit you in some way. If you get the crits, the timer will stop giving you more time, giving you more resources. If you take out the top base, you gain five more listening posts, giving you a massive boost to your economy. If you take out the bottom base, you get three listening posts, medium boost to your economy and then access to this area which will help you later on in the game and the middle has four listening posts four slags and then easier access to the relic which strategy you want to go for is very much up to you but there is no best strategy there is whichever ba strategy best suits your playstyle if you like to play it more defensive then you probably want to take out one of the two bases, probably the bottom base, and then go for the double cheese. If you are a more aggressive player, I recommend taking out the middles early, the crits early, and then trying to hold them whilst holding attack waves and then potentially going to destroy them. And yeah. So that's been the Necron Stronghold guy. Obviously, any other tips or specific faction tips feel free to put in the comments in the discord we have channels to help you with a particular faction or with the stronghold in general if you're struggling just a reminder again there are helpful commands here which will get, make the game easier and if you're playing on normal there is an easier difficulty in the discord that you can use which will triple your unit's health Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.